Okay, next. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we go now to the last two types of agglutination reactions. Uh, and this is now what we call the anti-globulin mediated uh, agglutination. Again, another topic that you will have an in-depth in discussion, Gilds, uh, blood banking. Because again, this is one of your lab activities then, so blood bank. <laughs> All right. Ayan. So, um, again, anti-globulin mediated uh, agglutination. So, this test, um, your anti-human globulin test or your AHG, okay, AHG, ayan, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but yeah, AHG or your Coombs test, the other name, uh, it detects, what, what it does is it detects a non-agglutinating antibody or according to blood bank, uh, harmony na book, uh, it's an incomplete, ayan, incomplete antibody, okay, usually IgG by means of coupling with a second antibody. So I like to think it as if you're, te you're testing for an antibody. So you're creating an antibody against an antibody. Parang ganun. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's complicated, ba, but I can imagine naman na you're detecting IgG, or example, a non-agglutinating antibody by using another antibody against it. So it's an antibody against that. So parang ganun. Okay? Alright. So, okay, so that's anti-globulin mediated uh, uh, agglutination. Again, one of the most widely used procedures in, as I've mentioned, blood banking or immunohema. Uh, key component is again the antibody to human globulin, your AHG or your Coombs reagent, made from animals or by the hybridoma technique. We'll go to that later. All right. So um, always take note, guys. Ha, lumalabas din sa boards. <laughs> Anong color ng Coombs reagent? What is the color of your Coombs reagent? Ayan, Coombs uh, reagent. Nasa color? Sha ang color green. Yes, sha ang color green na reagents sa blood bank. You have blue, you have yellow, you have colorless, which is your LISS ba, um, and green, which is the Coombs reagent or your AHG reagent. Please take note, it's color green. Okay, all right. Ayan, and um, your AHG, again, your AHG is actually an antibody in itself, okay? Um, and it will react to the FC portion of the IgG, okay, Pod? So it's an antibody that reacts with another antibody. But this time, it's an antibody na kung asa siya, ang iyang bindan is the FC portion of an antibody. Example, uh, this is your AHG. So, ang, ang bindan niya is the FC portion of another antibody. Okay? So, muni siya yung AHG, muni siya ang imuhang IgG na ni tapot sa imuhang RBCs, let's say. Okay? Alright. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, the AHG basically iyang i-bridge ang gap. So, siya yung mahitabong bridge between the gap between uh, two uh, RBCs na naay uh, antibodies na naka-attach. Well, I think you'll understand that later as we go along with the different, the two types, no? And uh, illustrations then. So reaction strength is proportional. So of course, if mas daghang antibodies na, na naka-coat sa RBCs, um, you will have uh, stronger reactions. Okay, daghan mga antibodies na naa. And you have, of course, the two types, your direct antiglobulin test or your DAT, and lastly, the IAT, indirect antiglobulin test. Okay, all right. So we'll start first with the direct antiglobulin test. By the name itself, direct, we use this test to demonstrate in vivo. Okay, so when you say in vivo, inside of the body palang daan. Okay, inside palang daan sa body, okay, na anay uh, sensitization of an antibody to your RBCs, usually RBCs. Okay, so example, ang imong RBCs, ayan. Ay, ano yun, yung shape sa kong RBC? <laughs> RBC, ayan. Uh, na na siya'y nataput daan ng mga antibody. Okay? Alright, ayan. Okay. So, that's why it's called non-agglutinating antibody because nagtaput ra siya sa imong RBCs. Wala siya nagkoso og agglutination. Okay? Alright, ayan. Or pwede po complement. Okay, so when you say, we'll have a lecture, I think, on complement, man. But complement is, a, again, part of your natural immunity. Uh, it's a complement system <laughs> na siya different proteins, okay, uh, na i-release mong body still para i-protect ka from different pathogens. Okay, so pwede po, instead of antibody ang natapot, complement ang mutapot. Okay, alright, so proteins na siya, proteins. Alright, okay. Uh, the test is called direct because the red blood cells are tested directly. So, pag kuha dayon ni mo blood sample sa patient, imo siyang i-test dayon. Wala na incubation mahitabo and all that, I think. Pero like, <laughs> diretso na siya ba? Like, you don't, parang ano na, yeah. You don't, you don't incubate 
di pareha sa indirect anti-globulin test na kay incubation na buhaton. Okay? All right. And but you still wash yourselves, di ba? I think you know this term now, wash yourselves to remove any unbound antibodies or kanang wala na wala ni taput sa imong RBCs. Okay. All right. Uh, and again, if IgG or complement is present, the AHG will will um, bridge the gap. So, example in ani, no, lagyo kay sila. No? Let's say lang. Guys, daw kay akong AHG. Okay? Ayan, say mo bridge sa gap. Okay? And then, another na po the AHG here. And then, another AHG, sorry, there. Basta, until makaform siya glatis formation. That's the point of the AHG. Siya ang mo bridge sa gap between the different um, antibodies na naka-attach sa yung RBCs. Alright, okay. Ayan. A, positive a positive reaction indicates that there's an immune reaction taking place uh, in the individual. Okay, and... Um, it serves as an indicator of these different diseases. Uh, because this, these diseases, guys, what it does, mga good, is um, kanina mga diseases, uh, your RBCs there could be coated with antibodies, alright? And what happens is if na antibodies na naasim mo RBCs, that could lead to hemolysis, okay? Pwedeng i-hemolyze because um, pwede siyang kanon sa imuhang macrophages, kinasala makita na na antibodies na naka-attach or ang mismo ang ang antibodies o ang RBCs kay mag-react sila, something like that. So, um, it could lead to hemolysis and, and, could, and could lead to the death of the individual. Alright? So, it's important that we detect that. Muna ang gine-detect sa DAT or direct antiglobulin test. And usually, it's an indicator of these diseases, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So, when you say autoimmune, so autoimmune, there's an autoantibody. So, kaning mga nakatapot sa imong RBCs are autoantibodies. All right, and hemolytics, so they, they they can lyse your RBCs and can lead to hemolysis, which eventually leads to the death of the patient. Next, hemolytic disease of the newborn. The I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, the IgG from the mother, okay, IgG from the mother uh, will cross the placenta and then uh, will attack the RBCs of the fetus. Okay, so what it does is, ayan, mukot siya ni na RBC sa fetus and then lead to uh, hemolysis pa rin. All right. Drug-induced uh, hemolytic anemia, still the same because of a drug or naka-introduce siya o parang nalimot ko sa, ano, sa drug-induced pa. I think na hapten na na-introduce something that leads to the formation of the anti antibodies na ni-attack sa yung RBCs. I'm not quite sure lang, nalimot ko sa uh, pathophysio sa <laughs> drug-induced hemolytic anemia. Okay? And lastly, hemolytic transmission reaction. Kanang ma-transmission ma kang sa'yo, no? <laughs> na blood. So, na mga antibodies na nitapot sa mga antigens, sa RBCs ni mo, and then eventually lead to hemolysis. Okay? So, we want to detect that as early as possible. So, sir, asa po ang rule sa complement? Your complement, mga good guys, um, example, if the complement is attached to uh, your RBCs niya, wala na-detect, that could still lead to hemolysis kaya ma-activate yung complement system. And the end goal of your complement system is lysis of cells, okay? Or lysis of the pathogen supposed to be. That's the end goal of your complement system, yun. Ma-activate siya na different proteins, okay? Uh, but the ultimate goal niya is lysis of the pathogen or lysis of the pathogen, which leads to the death of the pathogen supposed to be. But if diri, uh, sa RBCs na quote ang complement, ma-activate, so therefore, it can lead to lysis pa rin of cells. So that's why kailangan siya kung siya ma-detect. Okay? So kanina mga diseases usually, ang makitaan anak na situation. Alright, so, here's an example of a picture. Ayan. So, antibody-coated patient cells. Dapat, again, washed, ha? Why? Because we don't want any unbound, meaning, uh, wala nakatapot na antibodies. Okay, that could interfere with the test. Alright, so, wash dapat, dapat. Plus, your um, AHG. Ayan, so, it's still an antibody. Okay? So, what it does is, again, it binds to the FC portion, di ba? Ayan, together. And, uh, it now creates an agglutination. We mo, sir, nga nung kulang, na kulangan ng drawing. Sorry na guys. Basta, you can visualize lang na, basta makreate sila glatis. Creates like agglutination. Okay? So, that's the uh, the point of that. Direct. Okay? Uh, <laughs> ayan. So, ang point lang yun sa that is in vivo na hitabo ang sensitization. Meaning, sa sulit lang daan sa body, sa tawo, uh, na anay na hitabo na binding sa antibody o yung RBCs. Okay? Uh, but, it's non-agglutinating. It's an antibody na non-agglutinating. Meaning, dili siya capable of mo agglutinate or dili niya kaya mo agglutinate or wala niya gi-agglutinate tong RBCs. Alright? Igual rin siya kitapot dito. But again, ang, ang lisod lang, Anna, is it could lead to hemolysis. Alright? And that's deadly. 
Okay? Alright, ayan, sige. So, again, more of that in your blood banking. Usually, daghan kina sa blood banking. And um, I think sa IS lecture din. So, yes. Alright, okay. The next, time is, the next type is called indirect. So, ang indirect this time is the opposite. In vitro. So, meaning outside of the body. Okay, we sensitize the RBCs and the antibody that we want to uh, detect. So, it's the, we usually use it to determine um, a, a specific antibody present in the body of a patient. Okay, so we want to detect example. Uh, oh my gosh, ma introduce ko mga antibodies na. <laughs> example lang like um, other blood groups. Example, uh, kid na blood group, no? Uh, anti example JK. Example lang na antibody. No, if you want to detect if uh, this antibody ba is found on uh, the patient, no? So you perform IAT or indirect antiglobulin test. For specific blood group antigen, as mentioned, dili pag yun ni, uh, dag, daghan pa yung other blood groups, guys, ha, dili ra ang kid, dili ang ABO, you have Kel, you have Lewis, you have, daghan pa, <laughs> okay, alright, so usually we test or we use IAT for that, alright, okay, so two-step process, so we get RBCs, no, from the patient, na yung mong test and serum ba from another patient, or asa mang gani, but ang point lang is, i-wash sa ang cells and then i-incubate sila at 37 degrees Celsius. So, so walay, walay reaction daan na nahitabo inside the body. So, in vitro lang. So, you incubate it. So, ikaw na nagpa, na nagpahitabo sa reaction by incubating. So, imusta silang ipa-incubate together. And then what happens is, the cells are then carefully washed. So, it now follows the DAT na. After mag-combine ng antibody, wash the cells and then add the AHG. And then, of course, the HG bridges the gap, forms the lattice, and then results to agglutination. Okay, all right. Ayan. So again, as mentioned, it's used to check the presence of allo antibody. No, when you say allo antibody, it's an antibody from another person or from another organism of the same species. Okay, allo, allo antibody. All right. And it's usually used again for compatibility testing uh, because again, you'll know in your blood banking. This is really helpful for blood banking in determining other clinically significant antibodies of other blood groups, especially mga kid, mga kel, no? mga lewis, um, mga, so mga kid, kel, lewis, mga, uh, of course, RH, apil pa po, like na RH na yung naibalaan ha, char, you have mga colton, mga inana, so mga major blood groups, because these antibodies usually, if ma-transfuse siya uh, sa other person, yan, wala ni mo na test, um, it could lead to again hemolytic transfusion, no? Or it could lead to if sa if sa baby if matransfusan ang mama na anak, it could lead to HDN or hemolytic uh, disease of the newborn. So it's important na matest put, okay? But again, depending po na sa SOP sa blood bank, depending po sa request sa doctor. Um, I think usually matest ni siya if the mother has parang or if the patient has histories na yata of mga troubled transfusion, I'm not sure lang, nalimot to go. But yes, muna siya ang point sa IAT. It's an in vitro sensitization. So outside of the body, mo siyang ipareact together. Dili siya pareha sa direct, na sa body pa lang dahan, sulod sa body, sa patient, nag-react na sila. Okay? Alright, ayan. Patient serum is used to combine with reagent RBCs, and all reactions are run at 37 degrees Celsius because most of your clinically significant antibodies are of IgG in nature. So, muna siyang 37 degrees Celsius ta. Alright, okay. Ayan, so, possible sources of error, failure to wash cells. Of course, as mentioned, if there, if there are unbound antibodies, these unbound antibodies can neutralize the AHG. So, delete, ang AHG, delete nang kabind sa katong nakataput na sa RBCs. So, walay agglutination mahitabo. Kaya na-neutralize man ang AHG. Okay? Improper certification. So, the same. Uh, dili complete ang reaction. Okay? Basin, dili pa fully close to form the agglutination. Di ba? Alright? Failure to add test serum or anti-human globulin, of course. <laughs> wala kay reagent or wala kay serum. So, of course, incomplete yung huwag test. Dili po na mo result to uh, your expected result, which is agglutination. So, it's important that you are aware sa yung mga gipangbutan na reagents dira. And it really happens. So, ayaw jug, ayaw jug pag dinangag. Munang blood bank is one of the sections, good nat. It's definitely the section di ay that I, in the laboratory, that I fear the most kay pwede juga, o sarang kasayop, guys, pwede ka makapatay og tao, like intense. I mean, like, tanang sections man sa lab, pwede, but... <laughs> like example sa clean chem or sa hema, pwede maguna, dili, yun, uh, dili instant ang reaction sa pagkamatay sa patient. Unle uh, unlike sa blood bank na, blood bank na sayop lang kag blood type, sayop ka o cross match or whatever, 
niya na sabi mo pag transfuse ug blood pag transfuse dayon na sa patient diba if dako jud kay siya na incompatibility niya <laughs> imo gipa transfuse so diretso jud patay ang patient diba so who mo nang scary jud kay ang blood bank for me lang ha okay i don't know if ma, ma gets ninyo akong ka scared so basin if mag intern mo puhon hopefully hopefully so Yes, okay. Next, use of expired uh, or improperly stored reagents. Yes, of course. So, dili na siya mo work properly, kay expired naman. And lastly, improper red cell concentration. So, again, uh, as you can see, no, ako mga ibang discuss din yung siya pang IS, pang blood bank yun siya. <laughs> but, diba, in your RCS, preparation of RCS, it follows a certain concentration because, uh, diba, 3 to 5 percent managay na siya, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think 2 to 5 percent, if I'm not mistaken, or 1 to 5. Basta. Okay, I think 2 to 5. And then, dapat on siya ang color, tomato red. Okay, tomato red ang color siya mong RCS. Okay, alright. Um, and, um, but some teachers, si Ma'am Lera man ako ang, Ma'am Lera Almendral man akong blood bank, yes. Cherry red yung pag-describe, but some books say it's tomato red ang color sa RCS. Okay. Um, and diba dapat it follows a specific concentration, parang 2 to 5 percent if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it is in this concentration that the ratio between your serum and your RBCs, uh, or yeah, your RBCs and parang serum pohon, uh, when you add serum kay equal. If I'm not mistaken sa, sa ano ha, sa akong mga reasoning, I think. Yeah, yeah. Parang yun. Okay. I could be wrong though. Okay. Alright, sige. So, I try lang to, ano. But I know you know the reason now why it, it should be in the proper red cell concentration. Because again, we want, ah, we want to make sure that it's in the proper red cell concentration because we want to ensure, ayan, the proper ratio between your RBCs na imong ginatest and the antibodies, di ay. Alright. Okay. Ayan. It's in that ratio, it's in that concentration, di ay. 2 to 5 na it can lead to the proper ratio, di ay, of your serum to RBCs. When testing, I think. I think. Chak to rao. Chak to ba? Alright, okay. Ayan. Sige, sige. Alright, so we now go to the test, diba? So, reagent red blood cells. So, gikuha ni mo siya from the patient. Plus, the antibodies, patient antibodies. So, imo sa siyang ipareact in vitro. So, incubated. You incubate it. Okay. Alright. And then, we have an unbound antibody. Of course, we want that na mawala. So, imo siyang giwash. And then now it follows the same procedure with that. So basically, same ratio with that. Kanira ang naad, kani ang naad na step. But kani siya na step until the end. It's still the same with that. Okay. So still the same kulang. Na kulang ang drawing siguro. But still, you get the idea. They form a lattice to which now results to agglutination. All right. Okay. Now we go now to the different types of anti-human globulin. So there are different types. We have. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm back. Boo, charot lang. <laughs> All right. So you have the polyspecific. So when you say polyspecific, poly, marami, specific. So it can detect um, a lot. <laughs> and in this case, it can detect both antibody or anti-IgG or complement C, anti-C3D. All right. So polyspecific, specific, poly, daghan. Okay. Uh, other anti-complement antibodies may also be present. Anti-C3B, anti-C4B, anti-C4D. Uh, Kanyang mga C4, C3, guys, dili siya sa Jollibee. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kanisha, guys, uh, these are your complement proteins. Again, you'll, you'll know that in your lectures, uh, complement system with Mom Teddy, and maybe it's ato apung lab when we talk about complement testing, complement system testing. All right, but these are complement proteins, okay? So, poly specific by the name of poly marami specific. So, it can detect both IgG and the complement. All right, diba kay, as mentioned, pwede man pong complement ang magtapot sa RBCs. Okay, dilira, antibody. Anti-IgG, they have activity against uh, kappa and lambda light chains and can also react with IgA and IgM reactivity depending on the antibody na nakatapot sa uh, cell. Okay, alright. And we have mono-specific, by the name itself, mono, usara. So, either, ra, either. Pwede, usara, it can detect, um, it contains anti-IgG or anti-complement. So, dili ang duha, Okay. So either, uh, all right, okay. Licensed AHG are either anti-IgG and anti-C3B-C3D. So as you can see, uh, C3B-C3D, bahalag usara siya ka reagent. It can uh, detect already duha ka buok, C3B o C3D. So para siyang two birds with one stone, parang ganun, okay? All right, but uh, monospecific, by the name itself, it only detects either ang antibody na yun, IgG, or complement. So dili pwedeng both, di pareha sa polyspecific, all right? Okay. Ayan, now we go now to how it is prepared. Ayan, so, uh, as mentioned, diba, your reagents are prepared from animals. Okay, so, kinsa din mga animals. Alright, so we'll start first with polyclonal anti-human globulin. When you say polyclonal, 
it comes from uh, multiple clones of plasma cells. Because again, diba, anti-human globulin is an, is an antibody. So therefore, it is produced by the plasma cells of the animals. Okay? So when you say polyclonal, poly, marami. So it comes from a lot of clones of, um, sorry, it comes from a lot of clones of plasma cells. So therefore, it can detect quite a lot of um, antigen spores or like taas yang uh, antigenic determinants or pwede siyang maka-combine with quite a, a handful. Okay, polyclonal man, daghan mang plasma cells ang nakaproduce niya. So for this test, we usually use um, rabbits, okay, QT. But if uh, large volumes daw ang imong ganahan or large volumes ang imong i-prepare, you could use sheep or goats. Okay, alright. So rabbit is injected with pool donor antigen, so meaning mukuha ka from, example, from patients of different, you know, race or whatever, para mas mugdaghan yun, para mas wide imuhang scope, mas wide ang scope sa imuhang reagent. So mukuha ka either complement or IgG. So then, this complement or IgG, since inside na na siya sa body sa rabbit, or sa kung unsa mga nina animal, this now serves as a foreign antigen sa imuhang rabbit. So, same reaction gapon since this is something foreign to the animal. Same rapun sa humans, if na foreign something ma inject sa ato, on sa may produce antibodies. Alright, so you inject that. So now, the rabbit produces antibody to these, to either complement or IgG. Ayan. So, that is now your AHG. Okay, na gets lang. So, since this is something that is foreign man to the animals or to the rabbit. So the rabbit's immune system will now produce antibodies against the complement or IgG na yung gi, uh, gi inject. All right, na gets lang. And that is now what we use. That is now the AHG. That's how AHG is born. <laughs> okay, all right. Ayan. So the antibody is now collected. So kuha ka from katung complement, ang antibody against complement or AHG against complement, and then AHG against IgG. So you call that as monospecific, kaya it only um, detects complement or uh, IgG, pero polyclonal, kay gikan siya a lot of clones of um, plasma cells. And then you combine together that to have your polyclonal blend na polyspecific. Na gets ra? So polyspecific na siya, kay daghan namang pwede ma-detect niya, pwede ng complement and IgG. Kaya mo mang combine ang duha. Alright? It's polyspecific, polyclonal. Okay. Na blend sa AHG. Alright, na gets lang. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we use rabbits. Sorry kay rabbits. They're so cute. Let me put lang meat, guys. I tried it sa Pamplona, sa sa Rabiton. Yes, it's good. <laughs> okay lang naman. It's according to rabbit, according to what I've read, no. Uh, rabbit meat is also healthy, no? So try try mo guys, charot lang. May mga pet rabbits kayo diyan. Katapusan na nila. Charot lang. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> okay, all right. Next another type is the monoclonal. Um when I say monoclonal, monoclonal, usara ka clone of plasma cells, all right? An anti-human globulin. And this is also known as your hybridoma technology, all right? So this time it uses now mice, all right? Um, that's how I remember. Basta monoclonal M, it also uses M, mice, okay? Pwede pong rats actually, but it's usually mice, okay? So M, M, monoclonal, mice, all right? Okay, so the mice, still the same. Injected with either uh, complement or IgG, same ganina sa, sa rabbits. But this time, the plasma cells nila, which again, which now produces the antibodies against the complement or IgG, okay, because these two uh, substances are considered as foreign sa mice, so mo produce sila og antibodies against it. So, i harvest ni mo ni mohang, i mohang plasma cell, alright? And from the mice, and then what you do is you combine that with a myeloma cell, which is a cancer cell, so immortal. So pag combine mo ana nila together, it now forms what we call a hybridoma. So when you say hybridoma, it's immortal. So it's a it's a cancer cell that now produces uh, this type of antibodies. Okay, so forever. Okay, you fuse it with a myeloma cell, which is a cancer cell. So continuous na yung pagproduce so, uh, antibodies. Okay, all right. So clones grown in tissue culture to produce the monoclonal antibodies. So monoclonal. When you say monoclonal, again, gikan ra usa ka clone. Like gikan ra usa ka plasma cell. Gikan ra pud ka usa ka plasma cell that really produces anti IgG or anti C three B D. Okay, all right. Ayan. And pwede mo siya combine to form. Polyspecific monoclonal. Ayan. Polyspecific. Kung imo siya i-combine. Okay. Kay pwede naman siya makadetect either complement, C3BD, or the antibody, which is IgG. So, polyclon, uh, monoclonal, polyspecific. It's still monoclonal kay each of them gikan man sa usara ka plasma cell. 
All right? O sa naka-clone of plasma cell. Gets? I hope na gets lang. <laughs> Lord, please. Okay, all right. Ayan. Ayan. Pero it's polyspecific because it can detect now either pwedeng complement and the IgG. All right? Okay, ayan. And again, history, history, kinsa naka-device ani? Kohler and Milstein. Uh, si Gerard, Gerard Kohler. I could be wrong sa name. I think Gerald or Gerard. Gerard Kohler and uh, Caesar Milstein. I could be wrong sa color, guys, ha? Okay. Kato na siyang butanganan og mga meat, mga fish, o mag beach mo. Kailangan kang color. <laughs> Mark. Okay. Alright. Sige. Ayan. Sige. Alright. So, uh, that's for uh, color. I could be wrong sa Ger I think it's Gerard or Gerald. I have to check, guys, sa Ako rang i ano. Gerard or Gerald. I could be wrong. Okay. <laughs> Ayan. Okay. Because, again, important ng history, ha? Okay. Alright. So, for color and Milstein, hybridoma technique. Alright, kinsa ganito sa antibody diversity? Press the buzzer. Five, four. Susumo, to negawa. Antibody structure. <laughs> Rodney Porter and? Kinsa to? Nalimot ko sa usa. Rodney Porter. Mura ko na remember. Nalimot ko sa usa. Mark pa kaulaw. Yeah. Ah, Gerald Edelman. Edelman and Porter. Okay, ayan. I still have it. Actually, guys, no, I just have to admit. Kula na jugay akong mga knowledge. Um, dugay dugay na mga kabasa po mga books so I think I need to restudy again as in like taya na gud kaayo but for bakte mga para kaya pa I guess those are my loves charla <laughs> all right anyway now we go now to instrumentation how do we measure um, agglutination what we call we have what we call your particle counting um, immunoassay or PASHRA uh, what it does is it measures unagglutinated particles so kato mga walay <laughs> wala ni agglutinate imo siyang i measure um, and then it uses laser beam. So, mara siya spectrophotometric in a way. Alright? Um, and the philometric method. So, katong uh, light na mo pass through at different angles. Uh, we exclude very large and very small particles. Latex particles are coated with uh, antibody molecules or your um, fab frag fragments. And if antigen is present, of course, uh, kaning latex particles mo react antigen, so they form complexes. And these complexes are excluded. Okay? So, kuaon siya. I think, kuhaon siya sa machine. Muna akong pagsabot sa pasha, particle counting. And then, katong nabilin na unagglutinated particles kay mo'y i-count. Alright? So, there's an inverse relationship. So, meaning, if daghang nabilin, daghang nabilin na wala na agglutinate, therefore, gamay rang antigens <laughs> na uh, capable of uh, reacting with the antibody. Whereas, if gamay na lang nabilin na uh, unagglutinated, meaning, wala yung agglutination na hitabo, meaning, daghan, uh, gamay rin po ang ang antigens na naa na pwedeng mo react with the antibodies na na present kay uh, awit sa tama tama kung daghang nabili na unagglutinated so meaning when you say unagglutinated dili siya ganahan sa sa antibody na imong gitest so ang antigens na possible present dito sa imong sample gamay ra nakatong specific yun for the latex coated particle basta inverse relationship okay so i hope na gets lang ang concept <laughs> all right okay ayan so types of assays it could be rate uh, you base it on the rate at which uh, the number of anoglutinated particles decrease. So, you can count siya kung unsa ka paspason na mawala ang anoglutinated particles. Or, pwede pun siyang endpoint assay. So, you base it on the total number of anoglutinated particles left. Okay, at the end. Alright, ayan. And used to measure several proteins, again, therapeutic drugs, tumor markers, and viral antigens. Uh, as you can see, guys, no, sa agglutination tests na to, um, and na tayo mga lab activities in the in the later part. We we are not only limited lang yun to detecting viral, bacterial, fungal antigens. We can also use immunoassays to detect other um, body part body parts, body components or mga body mga biochemical analytes. You know, you could also example so pregnancy testing nato. We can detect HCG. Example here, we can also detect other serum proteins, CRP, which is another lesson nato. You have mga therapeutic drugs, mga tumor markers, <laughs> tumor markers, tumor markers. Oh, di ba kato mga CEA, mga AFP, mga ganun. So, uh, because we now use mga immunoassays, and true enough, because um, example mga hormones. Yeah, a good example is your thyroid hormones, FT4, FT3. Uh, usually they use na mga immunoassays to detect to, to detect that. 
Because again, they are accurate po ang mga testing na mahitabo. Alright? Ayan. So, muna, as mentioned ako, the fields of medtech are interrelated. So, do not be surprised if sa inyong boards po hon, sa inyong clinical chemistry pa lang daan ay mga immunoassays na mugawas sa questions. Okay? O, giwar na ta daan ha. Not all the time na mahitabo, but it can happen. Alright? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Advantage, uh, three orders of magnitude, more sensitive. So, it's more sensitive kay mas daghan orders of magnitude. So, pwedeng daghan jukang pwedeng ma-detect. Alright? Okay. That's for Pasha. Ang disadvantage lang is it's, 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 it's expensive. Okay. Alright. Okay. So, balik na gamay sa Pasha, guys. Sa <laughs> so, particle counting amino assay. Um, kaning Fab 2 fragments also. Uh, Fab 2 fragments are also used uh, to limit or to avoid interference by other antibodies or other uh, whatever. And also to, prov to uh, prevent non-specific agglutination. So, Kato mga other agglutination that can happen, pero dili uh, caused by what you want to determine. Alright? So, munang we use Fab 2 fragments to make the test siguro more specific also. Alright? Okay, now for uh, the last uh, remaining ano na lang, chika, so some false positive agglutination reaction, starting with over centrifugation, of course, um, because it's too much, no? Uh, because of too much centrifugation, so too much ang paglapit sa cells. Too much ilahang contact time, physical contact. So that could like, uh, instead of negative siya, no? But because of too much centrifugation, too much uh, physical time, uh, physical contact, it could lead noon to force, na noon na force sa agglutinate. Alright? So uh, it's important to follow good pilar ka minutes, at what RPM or uh, at what speed ba ang imuhang centrifugation. Alright? Okay. Next, we have uh, contaminated glassware slides or reagents. These could uh, interfere with the test, and aside from that, this could also uh, hinder no, your interpretation of the result. This could also participate in, ang contaminants can participate in the reaction uh, that could lead to parang uh, mag-produce nun siyang agglutination uh, that is not caused by the <laughs> antibodies or antigens, but because of the contaminants found in the glassware bus, slides, or reagents. All right, so leading to false positive. All right, next is autoagglutination. When you say autoagglutination, um, you have autoantibodies, okay, within uh, the sample. So there are antibodies already that is found there, uh, that is not supposed to be found there. Uh, that is there, and it caused autoagglutination no one. Uh, so therefore, it can lead to false positive. So, pwede mga misdiagnose or um, you know, it's not the antibody that you want to react with your, example, red blood cells. So pwede ka mga misdiagnose or masayop mo hang pag-report. Okay. All right, ayan, because of autoagglutination. Or, wala giyud siya antibody, example, sa imuhang serum, uh, sa imuhang serum na test sa RBC, but then because of autoagglutination, ni positive noon siya. So, still the same uh, leads to false positive. So, misdiagnosis pa rin, no? All right. Okay, next we have saline stored in glass bottles. Uh, I think still the same ang reason. Nalimot ko sa reason for this giyud, the exact reason. But saline can also... Uh, uh, can develop mga residues ang saline, no? Uh, and uh, this saline on glass bottles, if maapil siya drop sa inyuhang um, inyuhang test system with RBCs and the reagent, so pwede siya mo participate dyan sa reaction and it can uh, lead to tibugol-tibugol noon, okay? <laughs> which could lead to, uh, which could lead to parang mistaken ninyo na ma-interpret as clumping. Pero hindi ito, it's just residues of saline na nag Kumpul, kumpul. All right? So, my nana. All right. Uh, next, we have presence of cross-reactivity. When you say cross-reactivity, di ba sa itong precipitation reaction? Uh, the antigen, example, you are testing for an antigen na in ani hang appearance, di ba? Ana. So, ang antibody po niya is paana. Right? Uh, antibody na siya. <laughs> Sayo pa, sorry. <laughs> Laina sa drawing, manan hindi ko mag-drawing. But example, na ay usaka antibody, uh, usaka antigen, another antigen, two, okay, antigen one, na in ana ara, Ang appearance still the same. The antibody reacts, all right, but it's much weaker, de ba? Because again, ang naara sa antigen is kanirang first, kanirang half, de ba? So the reaction here is not as strong as this one. Kaya incomplete man yung antigen, but the antibody still reacts. So cross reactivity, all right. So because of cross reactivity, if you want to detect this antigen, okay, <laughs> pero ang naani is kanidi ay mu positive ragya pun siya kaya react mga antibody. So it's false positive, no? And that could lead to misdiagnosis pa rin. Okay, what if this is the antigen that you want to detect? But, kani ang naa, pero ni positive, Japon siya. So, ma-interpret mo siya as positive. 
So it could lead to misdiagnosis in Anna. Presence of cross reactivity. Next is the presence of rheumatoid factor. Your your rheumatoid factor actually is uh, an autoimmune, an autoantibody. Um, <laughs> it's caused by um, uh, it causes the rheumatoid arthritis. So ang, ang rheumatoid factor is an IgM. Huh? Ba ko na sayo? I think it's an IgM that attacks your IgG, uh, an IgG antibodies. Okay, so rheumatoid factor is so the same cross reactivity or more reactive siya bisag dili siya appeal okay kay since since it's an IgM so uh dili gyud siya maka appeal kay dako man siya na pagka antibody all right okay and next you have the presence of heterophil antibodies when you say heterophil antibody it's an antibody that can react to a lot of antigens of different species spreading animals all right and we'll have you'll get to experience more about heterophil antibodies when we go now to uh, EBV <laughs> Diba? Recalling your virology, EBV or Epstein-Barr virus uh, serology. When we discuss the serology of uh, Epstein-Barr virus, you'll be, we'll, in, we'll talk a lot of heterophil antibody. But the main point is, it's a type of antibody that can react okay, to a lot of antigens of different species. Pwedeng bovine, meaning gikan sa beef, pwedeng sheep, no? pwedeng mga guinea pig, basta. Okay? All right? Not only humans. Na, na antigens. Alright? So, because of that, the presence of heterophil antibody, as, as mentioned, pwede siyang mo-react bisag unsa na antigens from different species that could lead to false positive reactions pa rin. And lastly, is delay in reading a slide test. So, example, negative ang reaction. If kabante mo siya yung blood typing, if mapadugayan siya mugahi, di ba? Or dili na siya mas, mas spread, or dili siya mo ano. So, instead of negative siya, smooth suspension, niya because there is a delay in reading the slide test. Uh, ni gahi nung to mga RBCs or imohang blood na adito, which could uh, appear as if they are agglutinating. Okay? So that could lead to a false positive reaction. Okay? And lastly, your false negative reactions uh, under centrifugation na of course, opposite sa over. If kulang po kayo centrifugation, walay enough time for the cells to have physical contact. So walay enough time to, pro to produce the lattice. So walay agglutination mahitabo. So false negative. Uh, inadequate washing of cells, especially in Coombs testing, di ba? Ang point, Ana, is there are unbound antibodies that could neutralize the AHG or that could bind to the AHG noon, uh, which then prevents uh, agglutination. So, pwede tayo maka-false negative. Alright? Inadequate washing. So, it's important to wash your cells. Okay. Inactive reagents, so the same. Wala na working more reagents. So, of course, uh, di na sila function properly. So, di na sila ka-agglutinate properly. Alright? Delays in testing procedures, Coombs testing pa rin, uh, because it could lead to deterioration of your antibodies uh, na present. So, it's important that efficient ta mo, mo, mo perform ang test. Uh, quick, no? Pero efficient. Dili po ng quick, pero daghang sayop sayo. So, it's important na if you perform laboratory procedures, both in the classroom and in the real setting, you are quick but efficient. Dili quick but careless. Alright? Okay, <laughs> ayan. And uh, next, incorrect incubation temperature. Because again, uh, some antibodies, uh, diba, as mentioned, they like cold or room temperature lang or IgG room temp uh, body temperature. So if they are not in the correct temperature, then of course, they will not function well. So they cannot perform the agglutination properly. So walay agglutination na All right. Uh, insufficient incubation time, still the same. So it could be that short ra kayo may incubation time. So again, uh, the time for them to be uh, sensitized, kay kulang, alright? So you need to follow yun on say procedure. Kung 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Kung 5 minutes, 5 minutes. Alright, okay. Ayan. Para, again, to give them time to be sensitized, especially is a uh, indirect uh, antiglobulin testing. Alright, okay. And uh, prozone phenomenon, diba? By the name is a uh, prozone and even po post zone, diba? Um, prozone, too much antibodies, diba? And post zone antigen exists. So, both of them cause false negative because again, there, there's not equal amounts of antigens for prozone and not equal amounts of antibodies for the post zone to react with one another to form the lattice, which then leads to agglutination. Unta. But since too much man ang antibody or antigen, so walay mahitabo na lattice, which then leads to no agglutination or a false negative reaction. Okay, and lastly, the failure to add antiglobulin reagent, of course. If you don't have it, you don't have it. So, ayaw na lag. Uh, ayaw yung pagdinangag. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, um, uh, because of course, wala kay reagent, wala yung may tabo. Wala yung bridge sa gap, di ba? Sa imuhang antiglobulin testing. Munang, uh, ang ato yung rule sa sa pag mag-add taong colored na sub, colored na reagent o non-colored, unahon yung natog add ang 
colored reagent. Tama ba? Yes. Ato yung unahon o I or atong unang i-add ang non-colored kay para makabalo ka na naa na siya dito. Or I think ang colored yung unahon. Adili, ang non-colored yung unahon. <laughs> para murag, um, yeah, kay para makita ni mo na naa na dito yung muhang i-add. And then, um, you add the colored reagent. I think sa ko. Feel na ko. Nalimot ko. Basta naa na siya yung proper way jud of adding, guys. Ha? I forgot. I think una dapat ang colored reagent. Kay para bahalag malimot ka na naa na day ka ni mo tong serum or what basta murag na na dito imuhang example colored reagent like AHG I could be wrong ha nalimot ko kung sa dapat unahon but yes generally mo na siya ang role uh, we always we always have to be careful don't be careless guys especially if uh, we're working na in the real setting okay I know wala mo experience pa kayo sa lab activities but don't be scared sige lang we'll we'll hone those skills soon Okay, and it's not like instant mampud na maayo ka dayon. Okay, you'll commit mistakes, but that's part of the process. Okay, all right, so don't be hard on yourself din naman. But it's important that uh, we keep in mind, yun, na we are holding or it's in our hands to uh, a life is in the hands, uh, is in our hands, no? So, a life is at stake if dita mo perform properly sa tung mga lab tests. Bahala kung sa simple. All right, okay, ayan, <laughs> sige. So that's the end of agglutination reaction. No, bisa bitaw dili pa. Last na di ay. This guys in the picture, this is what we call your gel test uh, to detect agglutination. So kabantay mo kani siya mga wells, no? Na na siya gel, all right? And then you add your serum or RBCs there. Now if nay agglutination mahitabo, so na ay uh, clump. All right? So na may gel, so dili dili maka agi ang clump kay dagko man sila. No so ang positive reaction ani is dapat na ay clumping diri sa taas. All right? Whereas kung negative na ay cell button or na ay red diri sa ilalom. Okay? All right, because it means that wala ni agglutinate ang imuhang RBC so maka freely pass through lang sila sa gel. Okay, muna siya ang gel test. So ang positive ani is um agglutination ah, parang cell button or na ay red at the top. And ang negative is uh, cell button below. Ayan. So, example na I read diri, no? Pag add mo sa reaction, or imo siyang incubate after all that, then na I read diri, diri sa ilalong, it could be negative. Pero depende po siya sa katong grading nato. Depende po na sa manufacturer na ay, example, if diri da pit kay 3 plus or 1 plus, and if diri good sa taas kay 4 plus, yun na Depende lang sa imuhang uh, manufacturer or napo na sila guide but the main uh, concept lang yun guys is if positive o agglutination or if mo agglutinate sila uh, the cells are big no the immune complexes or the agglutinate is big so di sila kaagi sa sa gel so matrap sila sa taas all right whereas kung negative walay agglutination na hitabo freely ra maka flow ang cells kaya wala man wala may complexes na hitabo so walay uh, agglutinate na itabo. So, marag freely flowing ra sila. <laughs> so, makapass through sila sa gel, sa sulud ani, and mo settle sila sa ilalom. Alright? So, that's the negative result. Okay. Alright, so basically, ayan na talaga. This is the end <laughs> of our <laughs> lecture on agglutination uh, test. Again, guys, no, medyo tag-as yun itong lecture so far. Because again, daghang chika, uh, medyo complex ang concepts. And again, as I mentioned, I'm very much honest with you guys that this is a subject that I'm not that confident of if I was to compare with Bakte, with Para. Because again, it's a subject that um, I fear. Yeah, It's something that I don't, I'm not that confident of. Okay. But again, I'm trying my best parin, to explain the concepts well. So I hope you appreciate parin, our lessons and my teaching. Parin. Bahalag medyo usahay kayo. Ano na siguro, TMI or whatever. So, yeah, that's for agglutination. Again, Daghantan Chika, it's one of the basics. Uh, we're talking about basic concepts pag yun. Uh, siguro sa mga sunod na mga eh, tests na to, lab procedures, mga ginagmay na lang. Alright, hopefully. Alright, or, or Daghan po kung Chika yun in general. Ako yung mga, mga inserts, no? So, sorry ka, yun. <laughs> Alright. But anyway, thank you kayo, dears. I hope you, you know, at least understood our lessons so far. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask to chat in our group chat sa atong open forum if I put open forum sa soul ninyo na sections um, and don't be shy lang yun okay just approach para ma-clarify inyo ang mga questions okay so again if you have any questions chat lang sa GC PM me sa soul whatever you know you know how to reach me <laughs> okay alright so thank you dears no keep safe and ingat keep safe and ingat sorry keep safe and God bless you <laughs>